Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today in War Thunder it's time to have a look at the May vehicles which are available in the Warbond shop. Now, now what is actually unique about this Warbond shop compared to ones from before is that we actually have a boat available in this one. Normally it's just ground forces and air forces but now we seem to be expanding into the naval portion of War Thunder which I think is absolutely awesome. I love the fact that now there are more offers for more parts of the game meaning that if you are a naval player, now there is a reason to have a look at the Warbond shop instead of before, where if you wanted to get a vehicle, well, you could either sell the, uh, you know, the special box on the marketplace, or maybe get one of the special vehicles, or maybe try for a premium that you're not really going to use, because, well, you want to play naval. So this time, uh, in the Warbond shop, now if you uh, want to know where the Warbond shop is, or how to use it, then all you do is go to shop up here, and you can find the Warbond shop in this little area. You can see that uh, you have a rank or a shop level at the bottom. This is increased every time that you do daily tasks up to level 5, uh, which gives uh, you need 40 completed tasks required. The way that you complete these tasks is through dailies. So as you can see, if I go over here, this is a daily that I have to do. You get two dailies a day, so technically to get to level 5 of the Warbond shop, you need to complete 20 days worth of dailies. On top of this, you also have special tasks that you have to complete. You can see this little number here, this times 1 or times 3 here. So in order to access this uh, box, let's say, what I have to do is I have to get three special tasks, which you can purchase here, and then they basically come in the same as this form here. You you can see that this is one of my older special tasks that I was able to do. And uh, from there, after gathering enough for the Warbond shop and also gathering enough Warbonds, you yourself can get your hands on some premium vehicles or even a special box which has access to these uh, interesting vehicles here. Now, these come in the form of coupons, so if you want to buy them on the Gaijin Marketplace, you can also do the same thing. Now, uh, I talked about these vehicles before, which ones are more useful than others, and the one which is uh, at least iconic, uh, a lot of people are asking, for the hydroplane HE51 is in here but uh, if we're looking for just usability probably the T26E or the LVTA4 ZIS2 on the Mark 4 A13 are the ones that you want to go for but anyway what we're going to be doing today is having a look at the vehicles that you see here and also uh, talking about which one I would personally go for and which one I'm going to try and go for uh, you know in this Warbond shop here so uh, let's have a look at the uh, you know news article itself. There are some wonderful pictures looking at it, and also there is a great decal. Remember, in the Warbond shop, there isn't just a bunch of premium vehicles on offer. There's also a bunch of either decorations or decals or boosters or backups for your vehicles or or stuff like bushes for your vehicles or even orders and stuff like that. So there is a ton of stuff which is available in the uh, Warbond shop, and if you want another little explanation on how to the Warbond shop works, they've actually left one here in this uh, little slide, which is wonderful. But yeah, the Warbond shop can fulfill all of your <laughs> War Thunder needs as long as you are okay with grinding uh, the daily tasks and also the special tasks in order to get access to everything that is on it. So it's one of those things which is freely available for everyone. You can get yourself uh, free premium vehicles technically, and even make some Gaijin coin through it if you want to you know do the battle trophy stuff when it comes to the trophy vehicles uh, right here you know you can sell them on the marketplace or you can sell the boxes themselves and people can try their luck and try and get something which is either rare or something that they actually want overall it's a really good system and since it's available to everyone there is no you know there's no buy into it all it takes is your time now we can talk about the issue with the time you know it may take a little bit too long maybe one of the factors such as either the level or the special tasks needs to be get, gotten rid of but the main thing is at the end of the day 
is as long as you just play the game and complete the dailies and specials, you are able to get your hands on, you know, premium vehicles for free. It's as simple as that. So let's have a look at those premium vehicles then. The first one is the Elko 80 footer PT556. Now we're looking at it from a arcade point of view. So we're looking for three vehicles and also some aircraft to go along with it. So since this is 3.0, it already has a wonderful pairing. The Elko 80 foot PT565, sorry, and the Elko 77 foot PT59. This has a ton of guns on it, two bofers, very powerful, no torpedoes though, but this does bring along some torpedoes with a lot of guns on the front. So you have a great lineup at 3.0 and also you stay away from a lot of the destroyers which are doing incredibly well right now. When it comes to aviation, you can bring either the Dauntless, the TBF, you can even bring the A36. And if you haven't run the A36 with the extended pods and naval, well let's just say you're missing out. So you can bring that thing, you can also bring a bunch of different other fighters if you want, such as the P400 uh, right here, or the P40, but I'd just say take an A36 and you'll be fine. Also take the Corsair as well if you want. So, what is special about this Elko? Well, first of all, it's rank 2, and this means that it's able to efficiently uh, grind rank 3, 2 and 1, so 75%, uh, if not more, since there's only 3 light cruisers, but let's just say 75% of the tech tree when it comes to America. On top of this, it is quite cheap at 1600 GE for what, in my mind, is seen as a... Well, it would be around about a rank 4 premium out of, other out of uh, ground or aircraft, and on top of this... And with the Elko, as I said, it's available in the Warbond shop uh, for you to get for free. So, uh, with that all said, what is actually on it? Well, it loses a little bit of its firepower. Now, uh, when we compare it to the 40 millimeters on the three zeros, it has on the front a 37 that you can see. It also has access to a 20 millimeter and two sets of dual 50 cals. Now, these are generally not great uh, because of the fact that you can see how the mesh works around them. These are very much AA guns, and you can see the detail on the ammunition, which looks absolutely beautiful. The boat models are easily the best in this game. Absolutely stunning. But the main thing is, uh, if you're looking from a front point of view, you only have two main guns, which at 3.0, when you're running against a lot of battle boats, not the best. But it has four torpedoes, which are absolutely stunning uh, for blocking off areas and reloading quickly and using them at a wonderful pace. It also has a lot of speed behind it. Uh, it doesn't have a ton of crew, so survivability is not great, but the actual killing power of this is great. And then, what makes it the premium one? Well, the premium one, the Elko 80 footer, has what is known as this Thunderbolt area back here. Now this is just an area which has strapped to it a quad set of four Orlicans. Uh, <laughs> it has uh, on the back the <laughs> this area here where a good lad sits back there and just tears people apart. And if we actually go to the test cell so I can actually show you uh, how it works, it just all fires, you know, independently by itself. It is an incredible powerful system. Uh, you can see that it's the primaries that you have are just the 20s, so you can see just the amount of damage that this can put off uh, that it wants. It does mean that you do have to angle the machine, uh, like uh, around about here, otherwise you're not going to be able to shoot through the uh, stuff in front of you. So if you want to get like the 20 millimeters on target, you know, they don't have a ton of ammunition, but they have enough to easily decimate a boat, as you can see here, destroying uh, that boat in front of us. So this uh, machine has a ton of firepower on it, and it has a ton of speed and a ton of torpedoes. It has a ton of everything. The only issue it has is obviously its survivability. But alongside the other two Elkos at 3.0, it is just really wonderful. You know, it's, it's a great lineup to enjoy at uh, that BR. The next uh, machine on the list when it comes to the Warbond shop is obviously 
the uh, T-3457 1943. Now this is another vehicle which is touted as a special vehicle. I suppose it kind of is because of its history in War Thunder, but uh, let's just have a look at it now. It's been on offer a few times uh, over the years in War Thunder. It's definitely not a new machine, but what makes it different to the other T-3457 that we see in the tree right here is pretty much the turret itself and also uh, the gun. So this has the ZIS-4 gun, the 57mm, and this has the ZIS-4M. If you look at the sh shells that this has, it has access to the BR-271 and the 271K, the O-271 and the BR-271P. If you have a look at this T-3457, it does not have access to that APCR round. That is the main difference between these two, and also the turret itself uh, is a difference as well. So that is something to take into account. If you've played the T-3457 at 4.3, then you know pretty much, or at least similarly, how this thing is going to act. Uh, as I said, just a slightly different turret and a slightly better APCR round, which unfortunately doesn't do a ton of damage. Because of the turret difference and also the APCR round, it does mean the T-3457 goes up to 4.7. And this is where the issues start running in for this machine. Because at 4.7, it's really hard to actually create a good lineup around. At 4.3, you have so many, so many options. The KV-1S, T-3457, KV-1 ZIS-5, ASU-57, you even have the SU-85 if you want to throw in a tank destroyer. Or, if you really want to go balls to the wall, you can add in the KV-2 series of vehicles. So you have an incredibly strong 4.3 uh, when it comes to the Soviets. But when you go up to 4.3, seven well this is just by itself isn't it and i feel kind of bad for it because it is a fun vehicle it is a great vehicle to use the only issue is is building a lineup around this is pretty much impossible because even even with the uh, aircraft you want to run 4.3 because of the Yak 9T being 4.0, and because uh, the only 4.7 vehicle that you have is a Lars 7, which is, you know, it's all right in ground forces because of its bombs and because of its, uh, you know, fighter on fighter capabilities, but you still want to run the Yak 9T. Now, you still want to maybe run the Yak 9K if you're feeling adventurous, or maybe a TU 2, or uh, or, sorry, a, a P8 with the 5000. Everything for the Soviets at this BR revolves around 4.3, so therefore putting in a vehicle which is 4.7, it doesn't really make sense. You're purposefully up yourself for not too much benefits. All the benefits from this you can get from the other T-3457. This is still a collector's item, though, uh, so that is something to look forward to if you don't have it. I just think right now in the game, uh, it needs to be lowered in BR to be useful. The next version or the vehicle sorry is the Yak-3. Now the Yak-3 is obviously popularized in the Soviet tech tree and it graces itself in the French tech tree as well uh, meaning that it is uh, a French premium uh, that you know uh, the French gets. Now understand that all of these vehicles are premium so they do get the premium bonuses on them which includes the uh, plus 50% silver line reward uh, and, oh sorry, no one doesn't, uh, never mind, it's the plus 100% research uh, reward, the RP reward that this machine gets. The other one uh, is, you know, this stuff here. So, uh, yeah, the, you get increased research uh, for the Act 3 in the uh, Soviet tree, and it can research rank 4 and downwards very efficiently. Now, the Act 3 is a great fighter. It doesn't have a ton of firepower, it has the Shivak and then two 12 sevens, but that is easily enough to be able to tear apart planes. It's a great mid-altitude fighter, it is able to turn really well, it has good acceleration, uh, the Yak line is incredibly fun to use, right? And one of the issues that the French have, if you look at the Rank 3s and the Rank 4s, if you want to play the uh, American planes that's in the tree, such as the P-63 or the F-6F-5, you know, you can have a lot of fun, or the F-4U-7. Uh, and uh, the VVs are pretty fun when fully upgraded, but if they're not, you know, they struggle. But machines such as the French machines you see here, or the A35B, no, the bombers are alright, but you know, we're, face we're looking at fighters right now. The whole of this line 
does not feel fun to use, apart from specific vehicles like the VG33 and the H75s. So, in order to bypass that, the Yak-3 is a great option. You know, you can grind out a ton of vehicles with it, with uh, being in a combat effective vehicle, uh, being able to take on mainly the Germans at uh, this level. Now, I've got uh, Charles the Yak-90, which was actually a weekend uh, offer at some point, and I'm very happy to have this one, the Normandy Nieman. Uh, skin on it as well and hopefully this comes back for many people but the actor is much more of a fighter instead of a ground attacker meaning that against all those bf109s that you're going to run into the f4s and the g2 drops it will do a hell of a lot better and if you are wanting to get onto french jets or if you're wanting to get, you know, into the ranks of the good and fun aircraft of the French, the Act 3 is a great buy because it means that you can bypass a lot of the rubbish uh, that is on offer for the French, which unfortunately there is quite a lot of uh, because of, well, uh, historical factors, let's say. The uh, next vehicle is the Nürburgring, and uh, a lot of people or a lot of Germans have been offended by how I say the low, therefore I'm going to just call this the fa 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 and uh, when it comes to the fa 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 what you find is a one of these, you know, large rank 1 tanks. For some reason every nation gets a large rank 1 battle rating 1.3 tank. If you have a look at the Americans, they get, well I suppose the Americans don't get one, hopefully they will at some point. Uh, I suppose they get the LVT, the Germans get the fa 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 fa, the uh, Soviets get the T-35, the British get the Independent, then you got the Rogo, which is a lot of fun actually. Uh, I'm happy that you know it's still in the game. The Italians haven't got theirs yet, and the French haven't got theirs. But there's definitely options you can put in, and I like the fact that every nation just has this kind of weird large tank at 1.3, and uh, the fur 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 is no different. With its 75 millimeter and its 37 millimeter guns, it can do a hell of a lot of damage. But you're not looking at a machine that has a ton of uh, armor on it. It's just large, and uh, with a crew of six, can be quite hard to take out. A lot of people look at these machines and worry because of their absolute unit status but if you have a fast firing uh, automatic gun such as you know a Panzer II's gun or you know even a Stewart's gun uh, which has a really good fire rate or the T-60's gun these things melt uh, along with like uh, AB-43's which would just eat it alive so uh, the what you find is uh, these things aren't actually that combat effective which is probably why you don't see a lot of them on a battlefield but there are lots there are fun to use when you're trying to de-stress you know when, when uh, you've played a lot of top tier and you're like oh well screw this I'm just gonna take out this machine here and try and have a bit of fun in it you know that's basically what the fur 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 is like uh, compared to other machines you just uh, same with like the independent and the t35 you just take them out to have a bit of fun so from a uh, competitive standpoint you know they're not great uh, they you know they'll get you a few kills you'll trade for one for one you probably do pretty well in them but you won't be able to win matches in them that's down to the automatic cannons that should be in the form of the panzer twos which are on your team alongside with the flag panzers also these premiums are quite expensive for rank one premiums which is why picking up them up in the warbond shop is a much better idea than it is uh, picking them up for ge since uh, you know you can grind them out for free the Ki-102 is the next vehicle on the list, it's a Japanese fighter and uh, it's very similar to one of its brothers in the tree which I personally have really enjoyed which I believe is in one of these lines uh, is it in here? yeah the Ki-100 so the Ki-102 sits at 3.7 it has two 20mm HO-5 cannons two 12.7mm HO-103 ca machine guns and we compare it to the Ki-100 which has exactly the same armament it's a very very similar plane the uh, only real difference is slightly better performance on the Ki-102 probably down to the engine maybe it's slightly different I'm not exactly sure but the main thing is uh, what you get out of this machine is a really fun 
on uh, middle of the way fighter. So with 3.7 what you're pretty much looking for is a fighter which can hold its energy well, which can also turn pretty well. You know, these uh, BF109s are very similar to what I'm talking about. Spitfires can do pretty much the same thing, but they don't have the good enough dive. The early Key 61s and the Key 100s really have this nailed down. The idea of being able to climb well, being able to stay in altitude, being able to dive well, and also being able to accelerate out of a turn. So these are really wonderful machines. They're really fun to fly, and getting a premium version of this I can only see as a positive thing, especially if you're grinding through the Japanese tree. The only reason for me why you wouldn't want to buy this is because the Japanese tree is so fun to use. Like, there are a lot of grey vehicles here. The J2M2, right? The J2M2 is one of those vehicles that I never want to fly again because I'm a 35 and 6 in it, right? Uh, it's <laughs> it's one of those vehicles. Just like the Key 61, uh, uh, Key 61 Iotsu, as you can see here, 29 and 7. Key 45 Co. 20 and 3. I don't ever want to touch these machines again because I feel dirty in them. It's as simple as that. And the Key 102 uh, it would just be a nice supplement to it, meaning that, you know, I could try and wash off some of that mud. But if you, as I said, the only thing against this is that it's such a treat going through all of these Japanese aircraft. They're really fun to use, a lot of them. Yes, there are some which are a little bit worse for wear, such as the N1K1, Key 43-3 Otsu is not the best, the High and the Tai are a little bit heavy, but the main thing is, with the Key 100, you can use it to get a decent amount of silver lines, not the best, you know, it's only a 540 SL, where a machine like the HAK3 is a 720% uh, SL. But overall, it's a good complement to a Japanese uh, team. I just don't think it's required. I'd rather, you know, just play the normal Tech Tree vehicles. The next one uh, that we're having a look at is the Independence or the A1E1. This is, I believe, the oldest tank in the game. Uh, I I believe, as I said, I believe it's a 1926 tank, maybe even earlier than that. And you can definitely tell from its World War One ideas. It has a 47 millimeter in a turret here. It also has four sets of 7.7mm Vickers machine guns, two on the front and then two in the back in these areas. Now, what is interesting about the Independent, it is one of the only British tanks which actually gets uh, APHE in the form of the Shell Mark I. Now, uh, <laughs> it's just, it's one of those interesting things. One of the other vehicles is the Sherman II, but of course this is contested since the Sherman II is of course uh, seen as an American vehicle. So the Independent with its APHG can do a lot of damage, can dish, dish it out. The 47 is a lot of fun. The only issue with it is, as you can see, it is uh, mounted very high, the gun, and the gun depression on it is only 4 degrees. So shooting forward and actually hitting the enemy can be hard to do because well you get a lot of low profile uh, enemies at rank one and they can just kind of scoot under you uh, which is kind of funny uh, but it, it will get torn apart by everything it does have a crew of eight so it can be hard to take out it has a engine area or engine box if we want to call it that which is absolutely humongous and overall it's just one of those uh, crazy vehicles that if you don't have it is always a joy to have it's as I said it's it's another one of those vehicles where after a long day of grinding, or even after a short day of grinding, you're having a rough time at uh, top tiers. Uh, the best thing to do is just to chill out, get a few mates together, roll out in T-35s uh, and the Independents, and just have a bit of fun. You know, just go out and, you know, enjoy War Thunder for what it's all about at the end of the day, which is, in you know, having fun. And once again, it is pretty pricey, <laughs> being a Rank 1 1.3 Premium, uh, so uh, it's much better uh, to be able to pick it up in the Warbond shop. The next one is uh, the Romanian Air Force HS-129B2. Now, it says I have this aircraft, and let's just go to it. I want to make sure it's in the correct tree, because one of the interesting things is there is actually two B2 Romanian vehicles. Uh, there is one in the German tree, uh, which I don't think I have. I think it's actually hidden now. 
Yeah, uh, it's actually hidden, unfortunately. So the only one left is, of course, the one in the Italian tree. And as you can see, the 129B2 Romania. Now, what this aircraft has in its laundry list of wonderful things is access to a 30mm MK103, so that is the high-velocity 30mm uh, the Germans made. It also has access to a 37mm and also bombs. If you attach the 30mm, put on armored targets, get that HVAP firing, you can absolutely decimate a tank column with this. You can also use it in ground realistic, you know, as a backup fighter. The only thing it struggles with is everything that a duck does struggle with, which is its engine power. It can feel like it's falling out of the sky a lot of the time. But you can easily rack up a ton of SL in this thing. You can easily rack up a ton of points. And it can also, you know, get you learning how to aim uh, underbelly armaments, uh, which is not as easy as, you know, some may believe. It also has has a wonderful cockpit in it, uh, which I feel like is always forgotten about <laughs> with this machine and a lot of other machines as well, uh, just because of the fact that, you know, uh, they are maybe not as popular, but you can see that this is it, right? So uh, you've got the inside, you've got the guns, you've got some uh, gauges on the actual engines themselves, and th this is all you have, you know, this is your aimer, <laughs> and uh, that's what you've got to deal with. You've got a wonderful mirror up there as well. And of course, uh, the stuff strapped around the leg of the pilot, and just a bunch of gauges and stuff. I don't know, I just really like this uh, wonderful cockpit. But as a ground realistic support, uh, Italy is definitely struggling for that around the 3.3 area. You know, you have the P108A Serie 2. And uh, all I'll say about this is that it's just jank, you know, it's an awful machine. So this, uh, the, <laughs> the duck is obviously a lot better uh, at ground strike rolls. And since it's at 3.3, you can run it with your P-40 Leoncellos, uh, which is a good lineup if you have the other one. If you don't, you know, you can bring along the Semavente 1953 or the Breda, 4, uh, Breda 501 and, you know, slot this thing in same alongside a G55 Soto Series 3, so, uh, sorry, Soto 00, zero. so with that, uh, it, it can perform really great. Uh, I know, personally, uh, that with the Duck, uh, it's, it's one of those weird aircraft, because it's definitely got its niche, it can do a hell of a lot well, but the question is if the enemy team lets you, and obviously uh, it really depends on if you're willing to take the chance or not, and if you're not willing to take the chance on it, then, you know, don't pick it up, but if you are willing to take the chance on this vehicle, uh, which will happen, you know, 50% of the time, you'll probably get spotted early and die, and, you know, you won't lose that many silver lines because of the fact that it is a 1,740 max repair cost. I mean, you'll probably make silver lines just by dying in this thing, uh, but those 50% of the times where you don't get caught, you can rack up so much SL in this, you can rack up so much research in this, especially for the vehicles from rank 4 and below. So, overall, I would say pick it up once again. Uh, really good, you know, really good vehicle for what it's good at. So you've just got to make sure not to get caught, and, well, you don't really have control over that. The last one is, of course, the Battle Trophy box with all of these vehicles in it. If you want to see my opinion on these, make sure to check check out last month's uh, War Bonds uh, video where I go through them. So, which one am I personally going to be going for? Well, the naval one, right? Because I want to get the uh, naval premium up and running, uh, try and use it to try and get some of the later tier boats and uh, some of the higher tier ships. Uh, but if I was being honest, uh, you know, and, and just instead of taking away all of my, you know, what I want to grind, the one I would go for is the Act 3 uh, the Act 3 is easily the best out of this bunch uh, when it comes to its uses. It will get you past a lot of the French aircraft which struggle, and it is a damn good plane. It's a very good support plane and ground realistic, and also on top of it, it will be able to annihilate anything that it touches. The T-3457 needs to be knocked down in BR. The far 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 and the Independent are fun, but, you know, if you actually want to grind, they're not very useful. The HS-129 is great for silver lines. The Q-102 is great, but there's too many good aircraft of that BR for the Japanese. Just go play them. So if you're not interested in ships, the Yak-3 is the way to go. Uh, and if you're not interested in the Yak-3, then I would say the Duck, uh, just to get you through the Italian tree and to be able to turn your brain off and 
print silver lions. Anyway, uh, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank B. Young, Blackie, Daniel Stanton, Dyslexic Child, Martinez, Matati, Moxie, Nito, Nick Graham, Alobrolo, and Super Cacti for supporting me on Patreon.